You'll go to hell if you've lived in sin. So say your prayers, cuz here comes Grim. To keep doing daily videos on YouTube, I need to raise my Patreon and Subscribestar income to a grand total of $200 a month. So if you're so inclined, help a chap out. Zang. There have been developments in the whole Zack Smith situation. But some of you probably don't know who Zack Smith is, you don't know who Etin is, you don't know what something awful is, or RPG Net is, or what the accusations made against Zack are, or what Consultant Gate was, or the increasing split between the woke mob and everyone else in role playing. There's so many different moving parts that need to be covered, and I don't really know how to approach it. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Zach Smith is an RPG designer, artist, and occasional porn star who really helped with the sort of modern trendification of D&D with his blog and vlog and podcast D&D with porn stars. He was accused by his ex, Mandy Morbid, of various sexual improprieties uh, on Twitter without too much support that I've seen, but I'm cut off from much of that end of, end of Twitter and social media, so I may not have seen it. Uh, but this was enough to get Zach cancelled and so on. Uh, Zach also consulted on D&D 5th edition and this kerfuffle resulted in him being removed from that. He has a reputation for being something of an asshole, being very argumentative, uh, being very dogged in going against anyone who says anything mean about him or any of his crew uh, or his girlfriend up until yeah, she fucked off. Um, so that that's him he, he's an asshole but he's a talented asshole and he doesn't suffer fools gladly and he fights his corner which has made him manifestly unpopular in certain circles uh all of this constant conflict eventually ended in this accusation of sexual assault and or rape and whatever else and this at the height of the sort of me too thing and there was a, a an attempt to purge the ranks in tabletop games i suppose um, this hadn't, up until recently, stood any kind of legal test in court or anything, and now it has, which is why I'm making a video on it. So that's Zach. Etin, um, he is a troll and a goon. A goon is someone who frequents a forum called Something Awful, which is like 4chan, except you have to be dumb enough to pay for the privilege to use it. So it's a notorious nest of trolls, basically. Stupid trolls who've paid money to be on a site. Ten bucks is, is the, the, the slander that gets put against them for it. So he's a goon and a troll, and he is or has been a moderator on several forums where he has abused his privileges there. Uh, he's led the charge on various attempts to cancel various people in uh, the, the tabletop industry, myself, uh, spreading rumours that he knew to be false, uh, pundit, Zach, obviously, uh, troll a nasty piece of work, someone who has abused their position as a moderator on multiple occasions uh, and has come after me personally, so take my bias into account if you would. Now he, when these accusations about Zach came out, uh, put an awful lot of stock in them and went about spreading them far and wide to all and sundry. This resulted in Zach suing him in the Australian courts, which is where I think Etin lives. And there you go. Um, Etin is figuratively two-faced and it makes sense that he would choose Etin as his nickname, kind of a bit of a tell there, it being a two-headed giant monster from Dungeons and Dragons. So he's chosen something literally two-faced to represent his own figurative two-faced nature. So that covers Zack, that covers the consultant gate was the fact that Zack and Pundit um, consulted on D&D 5th edition. Uh, and that covers something awful and it covers Etin. So, okay, that's, that's the basic ground. 
the context in which all of this is taking place is that since about 2010 or so with the first kind of rumblings that's when this kind of woke movement this hyper pc movement started started springing up and shifting from perfectly laudable goals of justice and representation and so on to becoming nagging busybodies moral puritans and and a threat to free expression certainly in the gaming space and i think as we've seen elsewhere so that gives you the 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 context and some idea that this has been going on for years and people have become entrenched very bitter and very nasty now the right likes to accuse people of paedophilia apparently seemingly uh, they like to spin their, their conspiracies which were maybe lent a little more weight than they should have been by the whole epstein case they like to throw that at people it's it's such a virulent nasty thing to accuse somebody of that it can't help but stain their character even if it's entirely spurious the left likes to accuse people of sexual assault or misogyny or rape and that sort of thing um, that tends to stick in a similar way uh, but comes from a different set of people given the amount of woke type of people who it has emerged have been engaged in various dodgy sexual practices shall we say uh, it, it makes you wonder how many people on the right are covering for their own uh, peccadillos and issues as well so yeah something something to bear in mind now by and large things like like me too like these accusations that go around they depend upon people not defending themselves they depend on people being too poor or you know, lacking the, the strength of will or strength of character or having the quality of mercy that they don't want to ruin someone else's life just because they spread nasty rumors about them that's fine i guess that 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 works up until the point that you run into someone who does have the spare money who does have the inclination who does have the time who does have the willpower to pursue you for the unbacked accusations that you're making against them now i don't know what zach is or is not guilty of nor do you nor does anybody and except the the, uh, the people directly involved and they may not be telling the truth on, on one side or the other we just don't know and this is why courts have burdens of proof that's why we have legal tests or are supposed to have legal tests before we punish someone before we destroy their lives before we rub them out of existence and so on this may seem unfair to some people but it's the only way you get to something just i feel a little bit guilty now about having gone along with the accusations towards zach because it's hard to tell how much of this is his autistic laser focus on gathering information and browbeating people and how much of it is you know gen genuinely exonerating information but there's a lot of information on his his blogs and his website of people giving character statements uh things from mandy's father about what's what's gone on um there's there's a lot of stuff that backs zach's side of the equation and there's not a lot of stuff that backs mandy's side of the equation but we we just don't know in my mind that means we should hold someone innocent until proven guilty but there nothing was taken to court no no accusations were taken to court he was never tried or convicted or arrested for anything that he's been accused of so there there has been up until this point no legal test of the claims against zach or for mandy or or whatever else until now now zach has launched a civil suit against mandy that's in canada and there haven't been any developments it's peculiar i was just talking to some people about this the other day um but now we have had it go through a legal test in australia about libel and, and defamation Etin spread all these things about Zach said a few choice things as well uh, Zach took him to court and won so at least in the eyes of a civil court it doesn't appear that there is enough data enough information to say that Zach could reasonably by a legal standard at least 
be called an abuser or a rapist or yeah, or whatever else it is you, you want him to have been accused of. So this is the first legal test that we've had of these claims against Zach, and they've failed that test. Australia has pretty bad libel laws. It's easy to, to get someone for libeling you. Britain, similarly, there's, there's issues there. I don't know what Canada's like, but given it's probably inherited a lot of the, the English legal system, it's probably pretty bad there as well for people. So I don't think you should put too much stock in this. But it has been a legal test of the claims against Zach, and they failed. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. Son of a bitch must pay. So what was the, the, the practical upshot of, of this case being, being settled in favour of Zach? Well, Etin had to make an apology, which runs as follows. I, Etin, uh, the user of Twitter account Etin64, published in February 2019 some tweets about Zach Smith, the author of Vornheim, Red and Pleasant Land, Demon City and other publications, and also a consultant on Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition claiming that he was a sexual predator and abuser. I acknowledge uh, that my tweets were defamatory of him. I have now removed the tweets and I unreservedly apologize to Zach Smith for having made them. I also acknowledge and apologize to, Jack, to Zach Smith for the following. I repeatedly made statements about Zach Smith which I did not undertake any suitable fact check. And I apologize for purposely purposefully evading requests for proof of my claims and providing evidence, counter-evidence or counter-arguments. In addition to this apology, I have also uh, made a payment to Zach Smith as a result of the defamatory statements I've made about him. So, an undisclosed amount of money and uh, a public apology. So what overall difference does this really make to anything? How much? None at all. Nobody learned a goddamn thing. Oh dear. How pathetic. Yes, I anticipated that. If you look at the comments beneath Etin's apology, they're all of people repeating the claims against Zack, uh, adding to them, you know, just bandying on top of it. How much of that is goons at Etin's beck and call, I don't know. But yeah, nobody seems to have learned anything, and particularly not to have ab absorbed the lesson that libel and slander and defamation engaged in online are still libel and slander and, and defamation and can be pursued in the courts. So, I mean, I doubt Zach can identify all of them and sue all of them, but uh, it would seem that he has a fairly lucrative future for as long as he cares to go after people for this. And the, the lesson that, you know, people should be considered innocent until proven guilty has not been learned. What difference does this make to Zach? Again, fucking nothing. His name is still stripped from the 5th edition credits, he still can't have his products sold on drive through RPG, all because of, a, of an accusation made online. Now, I don't know whether he's guilty, you don't know whether he's guilty. This is the only legal test we've had so far. What do you do in a situation like that? If you're principled, then you stick to innocent until proven guilty. But people don't like that in certain quarters. They even advocate moving to an inquisitorial form of justice where you're considered guilty. Isn't that rather unethical behavior? Oh, is it? I'm afraid I'm a bit out of touch. And the fact that it's gone to court makes no difference, which just goes to show how far gone everything is. The material effect of being accused of things, however spuriously, it is big. And the courts are not suitable to seek recourse for this if you do happen to be innocent. It's just, it's just too late. And whether we're looking at the Johnny Depp Amber Heard situation or the Zach Smith situation, however rare it may or may not be that these stories and accusations towards people turn out to be untrue, we still need that standard of evidence, we still need that caution. And one has to wonder, in the wake of this, 
how open Wizards is to a suit from Zack. How open other people and other groups that have been involved are to a suit from Zack. I don't know. Um, I feel bad for having taken up against him. Uh, I only really did that on the recommendation of one person who really knew Zack. Uh, but since then I've had reason to change my mind about that. This is the only legal test we have, but it's only a civil case. But then we're only looking at civil cases. So what what do? I, I just don't know. Zack is still selling stuff, but uh, you'll have to go to his blog, his website, to figure out how he's doing that. It's, uh, it's a bit of a long-winded process. So if you do place the content over the creator, um, or, you, or you hold that he's innocent, you can still get hold of Zach's stuff that way, should you be so inclined. Now, of course, I am biased. Uh, Etin is a dick who has come after me. He's a troll and a goon. How he ever has gotten any authority or any credibility in the role-playing community, I don't know. Um, it's it, it's bizarre. This is someone who shouldn't be let near any of the levers of power at any point because he's going to abuse them. He's got his comeuppance, but he's got all his legal costs and everything paid by by gullible people backing him up. So he's not learned a lesson either. Nobody has. Essentially, nothing really has, has changed or happened here. It, it's turned the heat up again on the accusations against Zack because nobody's learned anything <laughs> whatsoever. Now, that really pisses me off to no end. And uh, I think that those of us who aren't as polarised on one side or the other are left just as confused and uh, with just as many problems figuring out what to what to think or do about the whole thing as as we were before uh, I'm just gonna be rambling over those same points again so I guess uh, the thing to take home from here is that drama can have a big effect the courts have very little effect in modifying anyone's behavior or or attitudes it's uh, and this is a dangerous place to be in where a mere accusation can annihilate your career your ability to make money to support yourself all the rest of it without any kind of backing or test and yet things that are tested and backed by force of law are essentially nothing in the face of the mob that's concerning uh, I don't particularly like Zach he turned on me I fucking hate Etin he's an horrible cunt uh, so I wouldn't give him the time of day so you know it's a, it's a whole aliens versus predator situation going on here and, and the people that prosecute these kind of campaigns well they're a bunch of mindless jerks who'll be the first against the war when the revolution comes I have no better idea now what to think than I did before probably less so than before <laughs> Zang. Old Fat Punks is part caper, part comedy, part nostalgia and part commentary. It follows three ageing punks as they build themselves up for one big, nihilistic last hurrah. You can buy Old Fat Punks at Amazon, Drive Through Fiction or Lulu.com. Follow the links below or search on those sites. <laughs> Come with the dog!